Resilient too might not be a word you hear every day, but according to our next guest, it's a philosophy that could we could all benefit from. Well, she is a patron of the Tutu Foundation UK, granddaughter of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and author, I know. <laughs> She's also the author of the book, Everyday Ubuntu: Living Better Together, The African Way. Please join us in welcoming Mungi Ngomane. So your book is a 14-step series of, of recommendations to help all of us embrace this life philosophy, which is Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Can you help us understand what Ubuntu is? Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to translate it is humanity. And so the phrase that goes with it is, I am because you are. We're all interconnected. And the way that my grandfather described it was that um, we're all inextricably linked. So it's about mm -hmm. humanity mm -hmm. and community and remembering that instead of just the self. I love mm -hmm. that idea. Um, we've all heard of the golden rule, treating other people as you would like to be treated. Um, but I'm curious about where does sort of kindness begin and or kindness end and Ubuntu begin? I think kindness is sort of included in that, but instead of, you know, just doing acts that are kindness, it's a way of life. So it's an everyday thing. Some days may not be the greatest days, but you're not looking to be described as kind. You're looking to always be thinking of how you interact with the community around you. And that's sort of where Ubuntu is. It's dignity and respect and kindness as well. Mm -hmm. This philosophy has been around for a long time, often very much um, connected and linked to South Africa in particular. But why is now the time to reintroduce this philosophy to the rest of the world this way? So I think, why not? <laughs> but um, yeah. it was actually my editor in the UK's idea to sort of bring the book to life. And I thought, why not do something where I'm sort of bringing people along with me? You know, there are stories of things that have happened in the past, but I'm currently dealing with issues in the US that have to do with politics and how I deal with that in my life. And so it's sort of a way of learning Ubuntu along with an audience and sort of you know, figuring out ways and how it applies to your everyday life when you deal with certain difficulties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so opening these lines of conversation and understanding is central to the philosophy, but is there ever a limit on how far we should extend that understanding and that forgiveness? I, I think there is. Some people may disagree, but that was something that actually really worried me about the book was, was someone going to take it to the extreme? Would I be you know, confronted by a white supremacist who thinks they deserve to tell me their opinion. And you know, I can recognize the humanity in them, but I can also say I have the agency to put up healthy boundaries and limits, and I'm not going to engage with you because I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So I think there are, there are limits that we can put up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I think we can agree, we're all shaped by our cultures and, mm -hmm. and our environment. And so in the Western world, we've mythologized the idea of the self-made person. Mm -hmm. And certainly that can apply, especially to marginalized people and to women dealing with equality, yeah. where it is a badge of honor to be self-made, mm -hmm. considering you're starting from behind the start line in so many, in so many ways. But there is this idea of self-reliance. And your uh, grandfather, Desmond Tutu, we mentioned, he's, he said that the idea of uh, being a completely self-sufficient person is subhuman. So how do, how do we sort of uh, mm. marry together these different viewpoints on being self-made and self-reliant um, and, and get to a place where we can you know, embrace that philosophy and make it work for us? You know, I think he, strong words, but I think when he said subhuman, he was meaning that, you know, no human is anything without the other humans around them. And so, yes, some people are self-reliant because they need to be, but who really is self-made? I mean, nobody has birthed themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody has fed themselves their entire life. And so are we really self-made? Or if there was an opportunity to rely on someone, could we do that? And, you know, it's a new decade, and we're dealing with all of the same problems. But one of the problems we've never had is too much collaboration. So yeah. why don't we try something else out? Great. I love that. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Great, Great way to put it. Yeah. True. Uh, already there are a lot of fans of your book, including one, Megan and Harry. So... Uh, you know, as we know, they did their trip to various countries in Africa recently. So what was your thought when you saw this photo of them holding your book? Well, it was 5 a.m. and my mother and I were flying to Bermuda and we started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine two black women screaming. Um, but I was really excited because the day before I had seen that Megan had done a speech to young children and she had spoken about Ubuntu and then she was going to get the book the next day. 
But, you know, the reason I sent it is because I had read in an article, not my, my grandfather had not shared with me that they were visiting. He, <laughs> I read in an article that they're visiting, and I said, okay, well, let me send it to someone in the family that will make sure they get it. And so when I saw that they had, I was over the moon. Wow. It must have been really cool. <laughs> Talking about using Ubuntu in our everyday lives, but actually your grandfather used it on a, on a historical level. He, he used it to propel South Africa forward post-apartheid uh, when he led the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission in 1996. So how exactly did he put Ubuntu into action there? Mm -hmm. So the TRC, he was actually going to retire, and then uh, Nelson Mandela asked him to chair the TRC, where it was sort of South Africa's way of becoming the rainbow nation where instead of retribution and revenge like the Nuremberg trials, it was less about blame and sort of bringing everything to the center and discussing it very honestly and having honest and difficult conversations so they can move forward as one country. But the idea was more about trying to heal as opposed honesty to... Honesty and justice and mercy and grace and forgiveness. Mm, wow. wow. I, I'm not, your, your grandfather is, of course, admired around the world, and he also wrote the foreword to your book, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. And I'm sure you're asked this question all the time, but please tell us, what's it like to have Desmond Tutu as a grandfather? <laughs> well, he's shorter than me. Uh, <laughs> uh, usually I get in trouble when I answer this question because I just say, well, what's it like to have your grandfather as your grandfather? But um, he's, he's funny. I think sometimes I'm funnier, but that's, you know, for today. <laughs> uh, but he, he just teases us, and, you know, he used to always ask, like, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? What, what's going on? Um, he's, he's like a normal grandfather who makes a lot of jokes that we've all heard a lot, you know? <laughs> we'll, we'll be in an audience and be like, oh, that's 5C, that's 4A, we've heard this before. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes he doesn't give you the information that you want. Right? Especially this one time where you, you won't let him live this down. Can you tell that story? Yes. So this explains the book that I sent to Megan. Uh, once he was telling us that he had gone to dinner with my grandmother in Paris and had said that they had been at dinner with a lovely woman, but he couldn't remember her name. So my cousins and I are trying to figure out who it is. We're, you know, throwing out careers. Is it an actor? Is it a singer? Um, and we finally get to, it's a woman, but she has a different name. <laughs> and then we figure out the name is Beyonce. <laughs> and we're like, okay, sir, are you okay? <laughs> like, you don't know? Okay, but yeah. So we learned our lesson then that he, everyone is the same to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ubuntu. Oh yeah. Oh Thank you. A delight to have you thank here. You thank you so me. much for sharing your stories. This is an amazing book. It's called Everyday Ubuntu. It is available in stores now, but to the lucky members of our studio audience, you're all going home with your copy today.